Hey, and welcome back to uh, Transport Fever. We will be working on expanding our transport routes this episode for moving on from ground base. Well, I guess we're still working on the ground if you think about it, uh, but we're moving on from wagon base kind of stuff and we're moving to more uh, industrial train lines here this episode. So trains are expensive, yes, but they also, here early game, probably give you the most consistent profit um, depending on how you set this up. So if you take a look at the landscape, you'll now notice that we're on top of this hill here and going up and down hills for trains, they're very hard, uh, winding path that you have to take because the trains only can do up to probably a five degree slope. Trains don't really get enough friction because of their uh, wheels and things to actually climb steep hills. So what we're gonna have to do is figure out a production industry that we can do easy and smoothly and then expand our rail lines based off of that. And that's kind of just the dynamic growth that you're looking for in these type of games. So if you take a look, we have a stone quarry here. We have a oil refinery, some sort of sawmill. And over here, it looks like we got some oil, another refinery and some coal places and things like that. Now. What I'm actually looking at is this. This is stone quarry, right? That's my FPF kind of tanks. Uh, this game's not very well optimized, I've been noticing. So the FPS is very sporadic. I'll go from 60 down to 12, down up to 60 and so forth. But we're gonna take things from this stone quarry here. Uh, let's, I'm gonna keep the game running, but um, probably just normal speed so we can get some progress going. Uh, yeah, we're going to be taking, we're going to be establishing the main line going right to left across the map. And this main line is going to be mostly for freight, um, but eventually we could expand it to include passenger lines for, say, going from Mare to East Grenstead. As you can see, there's no road connecting these two towns. To actually get there, you have to go all the way around this valley. But we're going to set up a line going from the stone quarry to this construction yard and then bringing construction components back to Mare. Mare uh, is kind of what I want to make our central hub to be, though really Amble, this kind of coastal town might actually look cooler if you think about it. But I think we've already kind of committed up to this upper plains area. So let us try to get past some of this lag here. Uh, pausing the game might be the best solution and also zooming in. So what we're gonna do is uh, establish some of our stations first, and these are gonna be freight stations, very, very standard stuff. 80 meters and uh, two. Well, actually, this is only needing one because at the moment this is only going to connect to one other location, so I don't need to make it too fancy here. That's a decent connection point. And you'll notice that the terrain kind of modifications and how these things cut into the terrain looks a little janky, but uh, you kind of get used to it. And again, always click on your station, make sure the path inside of the facility is basically fully highlighted so that you know these are going to correspond with each other nicely. We'll quickly jump over here to the construction yard. Now the construction yard's going to have two trains basically arriving at all times. Now this is because we're gonna have a drop-off point and also a pickup point here in the long term. So what we'll do is first off angle this at a good angle so that we can figure out how these tracks are gonna be behaving. And let's see, hold shift, you get, you get some minor rotation in there. And I think that, that is pretty good. And we'll upgrade this to uh, two tracks. It's actually upgrading the direction that I didn't want it to go, which is pretty annoying. So we're gonna have to lay that down again here. I didn't realize, let's actually start with a two just so I can See how this is laying out a little bit better than before. Okay, and upgrade this to Country Road, like so. Make sure that's connected, it is. So unlike Transport Tycoon, 
these stations work a little differently and I'll explain that as we go ahead and start laying out our first connecting kind of path so initially we'll just start with a single ra a rail uh, potentially also a single train and I wouldn't mind it kind of hugging this road for a little ways and then splitting off kind of going around this town something like this kind of taking a wide loop here and uh, we'll also turn on the height kind of contour line so we can kind of avoid the high and low spots try and keep the cost of laying this out as cheap as possible so you can see just going around mountains instead of going through and straight over them is a challenge with trains but also you get these sweeping curves which, which end up looking rather beautiful in the long run here so we will go straight a little bit and then we'll do a sharp curve here so we can get straight across this road without too much of a problem and later on we can make this rail possibly hook up to some sort of station to ship people in between Mare and here. Now the train's getting a little weird in this section. There we go, and wrap this around this direction. You can even potentially have another depot here. So it's good that these rails are passing a decent amount of industries. Kind of a large incline there but not enough to really worry about we'll keep playing so that we still have some money flowing in let's just get up to this contour line and following the contour line kind of close as possible i find is the easiest way to make sure these maintain uh, a good level playing field here and whenever you cut through forests or, or trees, buildings, things like that, it does increase your cost. So you do want to watch out for it. So you can see we're just kind of winding this direction now, passing the plastic kind of plant here. And if I'm able to... Now when you're laying these out, these symbols here basically says the speed limit in that section of rail so you can see uh, you can get the speed limit rather high so 120 and then as you turn it the speed limit is going to drop and drop and drop so you can have a really fast train but that might not matter because simply you uh, are turning too quickly or the height change is too drastic so again trying to maintain kind of along these contours for decent heights so of 75 kilometers an hour there as this really wind its way through the countryside this is going to be a really long route which isn't too bad and you get some nice plateauing of the track as you follow these along now this is actually going to have to go upwards here quite a ways That bad well it looks like we have unlocked a new boat to use uh, we, we're not really doing any major shipping just yet so not really going to affect us in any major way now getting this to be just a straight shot is gonna be very efficient and you also get paid more based on the traveled kind of uh, the distance traveled on these things so making it longer can be better there's the station we are going to so we'll go ahead and start wrapping around here because the station is pointed at a weird angle and let's just see what this does naturally obviously it wants to build a tunnel uh, now the tunnel is bad for a couple reasons one it's super expensive two it is um 
you, you can't really do two lanes in there very easily, so we're just gonna have to kind of go around the mountainside a little bit, and also it's very expensive, so try and keep that down as much as possible. These tight turns are gonna be a bit of a problem. There we go, so we have our nice, very long route laid out. Now, obviously, uh, only one train could really use this efficiently, and I, I'll go ahead and start explaining passing lanes when we get there, but first, Let's decide where we want our vehicle depot to be. Now, obviously having a flat spot here would be pretty good and I think a decent spot for it. So we'll put our train depot in this section here. And I'm gonna actually line this up as close as possible to the rails and show you guys kind of my base strategy when doing these type of structures. So I'm going to have a rail doing a wide circle going the opposite way as tight as possible and then it will then merge back to the main section basically as tight as possible as well so this will allow us to go to the left and then to go to the right you simply do that and so that's a simple train depot kind of layout there you can go left or right depending on uh, how you want to handle that now, obviously, the trains at the depot leaving and coming back can be a bit of a problem, so we'll make a little bit of a passing lane here. Just like that. And so trains can sit here and wait for uh, maybe trains to go into the depot or leave the depot and get out of your way. And We'll also, uh, I guess, go ahead and lay out the first path here. So let's go ahead and create a new line. And this new line, obviously stone. So we'll, we'll make this a dark charcoal gray. And we're going from station to the right all the way to the left here. There you go. Now that that is quite the route. And we'll also rename this. We'll rename this... Uh, and the quarry yeah let's just, just do the quarry line there we go okay so the line is established let's go ahead and pick out the train we want to use now obviously we haven't progressed enough in years to have a wide variety of this stuff so we're just going to start with the d13 and just add kind of open wagons here to carry stone now we're gonna take out more loans here we already paid off a million so really we have about a million left from the start still so let's try and keep it about that cost so one train with probably four wagons um will be a decent start send that on its way just so we can start getting money from this line and then we're gonna go ahead and take out probably another th another uh, couple million here uh, for a couple reasons one I would like to have probably three of these trains going if not more so we will do that and then also I need to expand the line to actually accommodate these new trains real quick so what you're gonna do um, initially here I'm gonna start with passing kind of tracks and then as it gets busier and busier we'll have to just make it a multi-lane kind of total track here so what we want are little passing zones and these are relatively simple to do you just pick a spot that you want it to start and you drag off hopefully there we go, there's a section there. And there, and you can make these long, wide, it depends on how busy the section is going to be. Um, train here picking up, you're gonna have people waiting here as they go by. And then you want these signals, these path signals. And you just wanna designate a, you know, right lane and a left lane. So you just go right and left. And you can see which way these are facing by simply looking at the front. And then you can do 
right, and left. And what that's going to do is if a train is coming this way, he will always try and use the right track. And if a train's coming the opposite way, he'll always try and use the left track. And if there's something in between this point and the station, the train will stop here as well and wait for that track piece to clear and become open. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out basically the whole network here. You can even do kind of middle sections so that maybe possibly two trains can wait here at the same time. And that might increase the efficiency of everything. And you don't want you know, too much distance between these because that can slow you down if there's a whole bunch of trains waiting all the time. So that's why over time you upgrade to multiple rails and things like that. But let's go ahead and expand this real quick and then come back and show you guys basically how this thing operates and works. All right, so all the track has been laid. Let's go ahead and start testing this out and showing you guys kind of how these passing lanes work. We have our first train here coming over to the quarry station. And there's already some items starting to pile up. So it'll come here, stop, uh, load up pretty much as much as it can initially. I don't have it set to wait till it has a full load. So it's gonna leave uh, as soon as it's full uh, and, the, and the depot is empty. So it can actually carry just partial loads. Now what you can do also, uh, let's go ahead and just follow this train a little bit, which is always pretty cool. You can see it's taking the right lane on every single one of the, these little passing segments. And in fact, if I go ahead and release one of the new trains, you can see the smoke coming out of the station now, and uh, they'll just go ahead and pass each other rather smoothly. So no hang-ups here, they're off. They're gonna go ahead and pick up some more stone from the quarry to bring it to the processing plant. And you can see this thing really picks up speed. So it's really a good idea to have kind of a decent amount of these passing stations, but also um, straight, long paths. So you don't wanna do a lot of curves, don't wanna do a lot of uphills. We can, it's gonna slow it down and really time is money in these type of games. Now you'll notice that we are actually at negative money right now. Um, I'm at negative 74K, which is normal as my FPS dies due to arbitrary reasons in this game. Now there is a small train ahead of it. This is technically the initial train and it's not carrying much. It's only carrying about uh, three tons or three stone in general. So not much to write home about. The other train that we just launched out is actually leaving the station now with a full 16 of 16 stone. But if we can get a decent price for just the three, just imagine how much 16 will bring. Uh, 16, of course, being a whole lot more than before. And really, our bread and butter is still these road vehicles here initially. But these trains do have a higher running cost. So if we're not making profit, you more like you're subsidizing your trains with your road vehicles, and then you're using your trains more so to bring in large initial uh, chunks of money here. Let's go ahead and send out the fourth train. We have four trains on this whole line here. And again, it's using the right side, the right lanes uh, to go into the passing, and then coming into the depot here. So these three tons only brought in about 65k. So here times that by about by about what four or five and that's about what a full load will bring so as we approach and uh, let this second train get closer and closer you will see kind of how that's going to look and play out for us you know just the country road of everything is is quite a nice effect as well and you can hide all the little icons just so you can only tell where these trains are by the plumage of their smoke here as they travel around now we'll have to extend our fleet we'll have to increase our overall lanes because obviously if these things aren't making profit quick enough it's actually a drain on our money we're at currently negative 90 and again the those cars over here are just subsidizing the income more so than doing anything useful but here comes the first basically full load here 14 of 16 so this should give us a good 
chunk of money. And the priority from this point on is basically to run through some of the years, pay off some of our debt because we are up to a total debt of about five million. Still not terrible. Uh, but so this one netted us. It didn't say, but we're at positive 182. I actually accidentally hid our profits there. But if we go ahead and check the finances, you can see it brought in about 300k, and that's still not a full load. It probably would have brought in a little closer to 400 if it would have had that two extra stone. You can make the carts longer. Um, in fact, that might be something to do. If we go back to our quarry, how much is waiting? Because if we if we have too much waiting and not enough kind of turnover, we can invest with longer trains and uh, start doing that kind of stuff. So that is something to keep in mind. So we're in the green, which is at least somewhat of a bonus. You can see our routes. If you actually open up your lines, you can see uh, every line and how much money they're making. Now the work line, obviously we don't make pretty much any money off of this. This is kind of a drain on the economy more so than anything. Let's click on this. I actually need to sell these two road vehicles real quick. Because we had too many running. But we're making about 100k from the livestock and grain going towards the processing plant. And then about 75k from the processing plant to the town. So the red shuttle and grain shuttles, that's giving us a good bit of profit. The quarry, again, hit positive at 325k. And the frequency is about every six real minutes here is every time you get money from that and we don't really have a train coming so we might need more trains or just longer cars so that we are doing that a little bit better but i mean that's a decent spread it could it could you know five maybe six trains in total will be ideal for that distance there and how uh how fast these guys are moving So, I hope you guys enjoyed the look of trains. Trains are a big part of any of these transport tycoon type of games. They're your bread and butter until you get planes, and then planes uh, kind of take over from there just because of how far they travel and how quickly they can do it. Um, again, it's, it's distance and time is money. That's all to worry about. In fact, if I went corner to corner, that's technically the farthest distance possible, it will be even, even better here. So, let's... Let's get the actual real count of a full load here of 16 stone. And then we'll probably finish off the episode at this point. As I still get very poor FPS. And I hope they patch that soon. Because I really want to progress in this game and really make complicated networks here. That is that it's about, what, 78k a year in running costs. And then you make about... 263k total profit a year per each train budget anyways thank you all so much for watching if you guys enjoyed this game and you want to see more go ahead and leave a like leave a comment down below and if you guys have any tips and tricks with trains uh let me know maybe uh what type of thing you want me to ship and work on next uh, as we produce construction materials we need to start bringing this to mare and you guys in the next episode